Hotspot Analysis Part 3, Understanding Your Results. Now that we've chosen all of the important parameters for our analysis of childhood obesity in Los Angeles County, we're ready to run the tool. While the tool runs, let's just do a quick recap of the decisions that we've made. We chose the best conceptualization of spatial relationships, which in this case was the zone of indifference. We used the Moran's Eye tool to help us choose the best distance band for the questions that we're asking, and in the case of this analysis we chose 4,000 meters. Here we can see that the result of running the analysis is a new feature class that's already symbolized to show us the hot spots and the cold spots in our data. Here, hotspot means statistically significant clusters of high values, and cold spots mean statistically significant clusters of low values. As I suspected, we can see this area in the center of the city has a large hotspot of overweight fifth graders. So we can see that some areas are red, which are the hot spots, and some areas are blue, which are the cold spots, but what's being used to symbolize those features? Let's open up the attribute table and take a look. All the way at the other side of our feature class, of our attribute table, we can see that two new fields have been added, the z-score and the p-value. In the context of our analysis, when you have a high positive z-score, it means that you have a, a hot spot and when you have a high negative value for a z-score, it means that you have a cold spot. While you can tell if your z-value is significant simply based on that value, the p-value is there to provide you that information in another way. The p-value is the probability that the hot spot or cold spot, or the observed spatial pattern, is just random. When you have a p-value that is below 0 0.01, it means that there's less than 1% chance that the hot spot occurred randomly, thus making it a statistically significant hot spot. I'm going to select all of the positive z-values that have a, a p-value of less than 0 0.01. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those p-values that are less than 0 0.01. almost there, here we go, up to 0 .009. And when I select those, we can see on the map that all the features that are that darkest red are now selected. I could do the same for the negative z values, and those darkest blue polygons would be selected. So those hot spots on the map are simply those features that have statistically significant z values and the higher the z-value, either positive or negative, the stronger or more intense the hot spot or cold spot. So at this point we've answered the first question and found out that there are in fact statistically significant hot spots in Los Angeles County. But what about all of our new questions that that hot spot brings out? Like why are there hot spots in these areas? What is it about South Los Angeles that's leading to such intense hot spots of overweight fifth graders? In order to start exploring these questions, I just want to look at some of the demographic data that I have and see if anything pops out at me. I'm going to start by looking at education levels in the area. I'm going to use the swipe tool to slide back those hot spots. Let's clear our selection. We're going to slide back those hot spots and look at the education levels. Here we can see the low education levels in the darkest green. And we can see that those low education levels appear to be in the very same place as the hot spots of obesity. That's pretty interesting. And what about income? Let's shut off the education and take a look at income. Again, sliding back the hot spots. We can see that low income levels, again in dark green, seem to be in the same place as the obesity hotspots also. It's really interesting. 
In this way, I can continue to explore my data and understand some of the processes or factors or variables that may be at work. I cannot really conclude or assume any sort of causation using this technique, but I can start to do some basic exploratory data analysis, which might lead me to my next step testing these relationships, maybe using a regression analysis. If you're interested in the next step of an analysis such as this one, or simply to learn more about the tools that you've seen today, there are tons of resources for you, including free training seminars, tutorials, and online documentation.